Hello, and thank you for joining us for this episode of Cinema Craptaculous Presents the Expanded Universe with your hosts, John H.H. H. Ford, Mario Doc Diaz, and S'more. From movies to TV series to toys to comics to pop culture, this show is your safe space for all things geeky and where you can get your geek on. As I said, this is John H.H., H., and with me as always are my Geek-tacular co-hosts. This is Doc and S'more. It's funny how I always, I, I introduce the three of us twice. Did you, ever, you ever notice that? I did. <laughs> we enjoy hearing, hearing our names, so. Yes. I do. I have no problem with it. I'm waiting for people to like comment like, who is S'more? Because sometimes we say his name, sometimes we don't say his name. Wait, wait. S'more. P- people actually listen? <laughs> <laughs> S'more or less. <laughs> S'more or less. S'more or less. I'm trying desperately to keep my identity secret. That's why I'm known as S'more. I'm excited to have the three of us together. It seems like we've had one but not the other. Um. <laughs> oh, we're at full strength. It's a yeah. It's a long story. Uh, Sean and I can't be in the same room together. You know, we're uh, it's a legal battle. Yes, we have legal <laughs> papers out. There's lawsuits pending. Yeah, restraining uh, orders. Right, right. Police involved. Oh, well, so. Doc, you missed a very romantic Valentine's Day episode. Actually, it was a lot of fun. We had a good time. We had a good guest. Yeah. I don't know. S'more, did you like it? Loved it. See what I did there? Love. Valentine's love. Day love. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah so, sorry. Uh, sorry, I missed it, guys. Yeah, I listened to it, and it, it was great. I wish I could have joined. Well, speaking of love, or lack thereof, <laughs> depending on your point of view. <laughs> yeah. um, D- depending, so on it, we are, depending on what side of the internet you're on. Oh, yeah. Which type of the, <laughs> which side of the comic spectrum. You know, it's funny. We are so late to this topic, and yet there's always a news drop. So it actually is always topical for us, you know? So Absolutely. Uh, I'll just, let's just dive into it. Um, let's do it. For those of you listening and didn't know, it's been four months since the new leadership at Warner Brothers Discovery announced that they were handing over the Guardian ship, you see what I did there, and <laughs> creative direction <laughs> of the DC Cinematic Universe over to writer-director James Gunn Go and on. film producer Peter Safran. Uh, they'd both be co-CEOs and co-chairs of DC Studios. And these two recently announced the foundation of the new films and series for what they are calling Chapter One Gods and Monsters. 2023 is now getting off to a superhero start, of course, with uh, recently released Marvel's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. And then later this month, uh, in March, it's uh, WB's Shazam! Fury of the Gods. So today... Uh, we're going to take a break from what seems to be a lot of uh, our typical MCU-leaning topics and shift our attention over to the world of DC and James Gunn's vision. So, DC fans, rejoice. This is for you. <laughs> we're doing this for you. We thought about you. We care. Do we? No. I mean, yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> hey, so here's a question for you guys. So, Safran and Gunn are co-CEO. I'm sorry, co-chairman, co-vice presidents? Both, CEOs and co-chairman, yeah. They're the top dogs. They're, yeah, they're Cocos. They're, they're Cocos. Cocos. They're, so they're do, Feige's. Do they share an office? Since, you know, they're Yeah, co- I'm, sure, I'm sure they're both like their desks are facing <laughs> each other like Jim and Dwight from The Office. <laughs> no, they, they, be... they, also, they also cannot be in the same room together. Um, there's a bunch of like legal issues going on, restraining orders as well. Right, right. <laughs> Law enforcement. <laughs> they got the Brett Ratner suite. Uh, Gun gets the desk, and Saffron gets the heavily used couch. Oh yuck! It's the whole uh, good uh, CEO, bad CEO. That's what they're running. Yeah. And so James Gunn has to be the busiest man in town, uh, other than Taika Waititi, because he is, I'm sure, in post meetings for Guardians Three, and also this huge slate. So where do we where do we want to talk? We want to talk about like when they started, or do we want to just jump into like what's been announced? Because we are four months after they took over, but I think they just announced. When was it? Was it in January? I think it was in January, beginning of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let's just jump into the announcement and all the. Uh, projects that uh, they announced starting in 2025. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, <laughs> who's got the list? Take it. Start with the television shows. Okay. Well, I mean, I think maybe we should backtrack just a little bit and just start yeah. with the fact that they're burning off the remainder of whatever DC films they had in the slate. So you have Aquaman, Lost Kingdom. Uh, you have Batman 2, I believe, that's coming out. And Part 2, as they're calling it. Part 2. Part two. The follow-up to uh, Joker. For you do. Shazam, Fury of the Gods. And, of course, you have... Flash! Batman 6. 
<laughs> Batman Six. Yeah, Batman, Batman Six the Flash. Actually, I love that Bla- Batman. I love how it's just Batman Six. I think it technically would be like Batman Ten. I don't know if you <laughs> add in the. the I, I've lost track. Click. It's like just bat. There's there's milk in that bat cow. Yeah, we just had the Super Bowl trailers for a lot of films. We we could have done the episode on Super Bowl trailers, uh, but the Flash trailer debuted, and uh, you know I we've talked about how franchises just get milked and milked and milked. And I can't think of a better example than... And The Flash is actually technically a new franchise being birthed. But, you know, we've had nine seasons of the TV show with Grant Gustin on CW. And this new Flash, it's just the Batman show. Well, I mean, look, there's a couple of reasons for it, at least in my opinion. When I saw that trailer, I was excited, not because of The Flash, not because of Ezra Miller, because there are some issues going on there. Um... That won't get into. I was excited because I saw Michael Keaton as Batman. I grew up with Batman 89. Loved Batman 89. And I suspect that the people who cut this trailer felt the same way. Say, like, okay, Flash is a little problematic. Let's inject a lot of Batman. I think a lot of people feel the same way. You know, it's like you see Michael Keaton on the screen. When was the last Batman? Uh, when was Batman Returns? That was 90. 90- oh. 92 or something like that 91 92 I can't remember the year exactly but uh, superhero movies were very different back then so here you see this trailer with Michael Keaton's Batman and he's like jumping around doing all these tricks and flips and stuff like that so people never thought that 20 plus years later we'd be seeing Michael Keaton's Batman again so people are excited about that yeah I just think that's the reason people are so hyped about the Flash movie is because there's two Batman possibly three Batman I don't know yeah well on a sidebar I think it's a little weird and kind of sad that in addition to sort of milking franchises and rebooting and we just aren't getting any, anything original that we can't let go of the people who first you know it's like we're locked into well Dave in our last uh, Cinema Craptaculous said it best he said that somebody decided that the 80s and early 90s is just the epicenter of where we're going to just hang everything cool and not let it go and you see that with you know Harrison Ford as indie. we're going to see an 80 year old indie. we're going to see a 70 year old Batman and I'm sorry he's bouncing around because it's CGI there's no way <laughs> a 70 year old Batman they're not even hey, doing Batman he, he beyond the where, he could know, be training right exactly he, he, he maybe it's like he got a cloned body and jumped into his body like Spock you know <laughs> like when you got all that money you can do whatever you want well yeah. again it's it's like we just can't let go of those eras so and I think that they run at a big risk, and Marvel too, is now the expectation is not the movie, but who's going to show up. And I think they run a big risk with all these these gossips going on with both the MCU and the DCU as to who's going to turn up down the road. And whether it's true or not, fans are going to expect that. Well, I mean, that's true, but also let's keep in mind that nostalgia sells. Look at all the reboots we've had on streaming. Look at all the movie sequels that we have. People like nostalgia because it brings them back to a time where they felt good, particularly people in our generation, maybe a little bit younger. You know, the night 80s and the 90s felt good. It was the time of our youth. It was a time of discovery. And nostalgia sells. And producers know this. That's why you keep doing it. It's a trend right now. You know, it's like uh, the audience is waiting to see, you know, which legacy character is going to show up. You know, it's like Spider-Man. You know, we got Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield came back. Here you have Michael Keaton. So it's like people are excited to see, you know, to see a face on the screen and they can do it. They can either de-age or like you said, um, have them hopping around with CG. And it works. I was going to say, let's get to Guns and Saffron's uh, ambitious slate. So they had a four months to put all this together, which seems like a long time, but it's really not. And when you think about what Feige did when he came in with Marvel Studios, they basically had four films, it was, back in like 2006 or 7. 2008. And they didn't even know if they were going to get to them all. They just had to have Iron Man do well. But that's really kind of all they scheduled out, and then Disney bought them. But I think Gunn was expected to come up with a, a much more ambitious slate, basically a phase one, almost a phase two, it feels like, of the DC. Well, you know, my hat's off the gun because he has a huge weight on his shoulders. You know, not only is corporate expecting him to quote unquote save the DCU, but fandom has high expectations as well. I like James Gunn. A lot of people like James Gunn. They love what he's done with the Guardians and they're expecting that level of craftsmanship and storytelling for the DCU. 
And that's that's a lot to do. That's a lot to expect from one person. I mean, yes, he's working on Saffron, but it's pretty much James Gunn's creativity is going to launch this. With the uh, success of the MCU, that uh, I don't think he had the luxury of just announcing like one or two projects. He had to come out with the whole slate. They were DC's probably Warner Brothers is looking at him saying, "Hey, what are you going to do?" And so he had to announce this big thing because you know everything's connected, expanded universe, and there's been a lot of flops. You know, MCU has been successful at it up until this point. And so I think he's coming in and he's hitting the ground running. And so his let's slate, look at the slate. Yeah, it's it's impressive. Yeah, let's look at it. It's impressive. So he started off with Superman Legacy. And personally, this is the one I'm most excited for because I feel like we haven't really seen a good Superman since Christopher Reed. And I think James Gunn recognizes the importance of Superman being one of the big trio to launch a new DCU. Well, we should probably discuss how it was handled too because... A few weeks prior, we got this. Uh, uh, that was messy. Well, Black Adam came out. Well, actually, a lot of things happened with Black Adam. Was sort of this huge news story, not just because the film came out and kind of it did decent but not great, but it became this sort of focal point for talk about Dwayne Johnson re- recharting a bit of the Snyder verse, but sort of recentering it around him. And of course, that had to do with a spoiler if you have not seen Black Adam, but if you haven't heard by now, I don't know where you've been, that Henry Cavill pops up as Superman at the end. And it's a quick cameo. You can even find it online. But then on its heels, Cavill took to social media to say, hey guys, you know, talking to his fans, I'm back. Can't say what we're going to do, but because uh, we don't know, but I'm happy to be back and it's exciting. And and he was making a big point about how Superman's going to be light. And then what happened? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> and it's, it's sad because like I, I do enjoy Henry Cavill. I would like to have seen more of him. He was great as Superman, but just the scripts just weren't good. I, I feel bad to see him go, but I understand why they're moving on from that. They're moving on from the Snyderverse and... Uh, yeah. So we're got it. We're gonna get a new Superman, and I think there's talk that they might base it on um, Superman. All Star uh, Superman. All Star Superman. I'm concerned about it being Superboy because they talk about how it want they want to start him young, and I'm like, well, did we got that's Smallville. Um, well, I mean, is, is that the entire movie, or is that just in the beginning? He's gonna be young, and know. then eventually he becomes adult Superman. Big chunk of it, where he, you know, he's. He's, he's an adult. He's grown up. It's interesting because it's it's an Elseworlds where it's kind of like the end of his. In that comic, it's like the end of his career, kind of. No, but this is going to start out at the beginning. He said that they want yeah. like early, you know, maybe, I don't know, just left Smallville kind of thing. And part of that could be they're looking at Tom Holland. And Tom Holland was a great casting choice because he was young enough and they started the character young enough that they can now, because I think they just announced that they've got like another round of films coming up and they can get Peter Parker to the next stage. They can do that with Superman and get an actor who is going to last, because it takes a while to do these sequels. And they haven't said that they're building up to Justice League, which is really smart. Yeah, I agree. It's smart. Um, And I think we could have a sidebar conversation later about MCU. But I think that just announcing these films is probably a good practical strategy. Yeah. I think, like like Sean said, I think Gunn knows how important Superman is. Uh, We haven't really gotten a good Superman movie in a while. So I think he's going to bring the hope back and yeah, he's going to be a, a keystone to this uh, this new run. But in that same year as Superman, he's got Matt Reeves' follow-up to The Batman with Robert Pattinson, which is an Elseworld. Talk a little bit about their the way they were shrewdly phrasing the bits of the Snyderverse that still exist like Flash and you've got the Batman. Like what how did they sort of say they were doing this? Two things. So for those DC comic book fans in the know, Elseworlds is a concept that DC came up with in the late 80s, essentially telling stories about their characters that have no effect on the regular continuity. These are literally Elseworld stories told in different locations, different time periods that could be read as standalones uh, that will not have any impact on what the characters are doing currently. So James Gunn took that concept and essentially he's going to use that concept to explain away the movies that they're burning off. So Batman Chapter 2, Aquaman, those are Elseworlds. It's not going to affect the continuity. Elseworlds to, in the term Elseworlds, means something to the fans. But to an average moviegoer, it's not like they're going to say Elseworlds presents Batman Part 2. They're going to just look at it and go, well, wait a minute. So that's uh, that Batman. And they're talking about Batman and this other movie. You know, so I think that in a way, if I had to guess, 
I think they're kind of burning off the Matt Reeves Batman as well. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. there's probably a contractual yeah. reason to do it. Because he's already, as one of the other films that's coming out, is they've got Batman Brave and the Bold, which right. is a Batman who is, yeah. finds out he has a son and he's going to be Robin. And that is the Batman that I'm guessing they will pair with the new Superman, possibly going towards another Justice League situation. I would yeah? assume so. Yeah, my, my guess is they're burning off Shazam, The Flash, and Aquaman. And then after Batman 2 and Joker, Folly, Adieu, those so are going to be the Elseworlds. Those are going to be the Elseworlds. They're going to play those out because Batman it just prints money. So they're going to let those, they're going to have you know maybe a trilogy and they'll be done with those. And then they'll just focus on the, um, I guess, the James Gunn era. Where does this leave some of the other big talent like Gal Gadot? She's out. <laughs> yeah, I think she's they're done. done. They're done. Yeah, they're not officially announcing it because Gun and Saffron, you know, they still work for Warner Brothers in DC, so they they got to sell the inventory they have on the shelves. They got to push it and say these movies are great, and uh, hopefully they'll do well at the box office. But I think the in- the intent is to move on. Like I think Ezra Miller is probably done as the Flash. Yeah, uh, Gal Gadot. She's I think she's gone. And yet, one of the projects they announced is Viola Davis uh, in her own show around Amanda Waller. Well, that's very uh, reminiscent of. Uh, the Bond franchise, you know, it's like yeah. Q, you know, she was over at, uh, she's with Pierce Brosnan and they brought her over with, uh, Daniel Craig and that worked. So that's how I feel about that, you know? And, you know, some of these, some of this talent, you know, they might not be like, they might be out of the, a particular role, but James Gunn might, Jason Momoa, you know, there's rumors that, uh, he wants to bring him in as Lobo. Who knows if that'll happen? I think it's a great idea. I, I do Jason believe Momoa. that James Gunn addressed that on social media, that he did say they're not going to be using the same actor in multiple roles. Now that doesn't. Now that could mean that they're not going to have somebody in the current gun verse, we'll call it, uh, play two roles. But um, I have a feeling that because it does bring a bit of baggage. Maybe you could say the same thing about Chris Evans. But I think in this case, I don't think they want anything to do with the Snyder verse. But I could see them. Uh, you know, Aquaman. The second Aquaman could be his last film, and then if they insert him as Lobo, like years down the line, they can make him look different enough. We'll know that it's Jason Momoa, but he's a really good fit for Lobo. Well, let's talk about some of the other films in and shows in the pipeline in the uh, Gods and Monsters. You want to talk about Waller really quick? Because uh, since you mentioned it, so basically this is a TV show and I think it's a good idea. You know, well, the mainstream might be like, wait, Waller, who is this? What is this? But I think it's a good way to introduce and kind of like flesh out parts of the DCU uh, and introduce characters like little by little comparing it to the MCU. She can be kind of like the Nick Fury. I like exactly. the Waller. Yeah. I, love the Wall- I love the Waller character and she does such a, she does such a great job. She's so scary. What's the name of the show? Waller. Waller. Oh, it's, it is. And did they say, is this something that they want to be? They haven't announced where it will go because we know that uh, HBO Max is going to go away and will be real sort of be reborn in whatever uh, Warner Brothers Discovery brands their new streaming service. Maybe it'll be one of the flagship shows. Do we Maybe. know? Uh, yeah, I don't know where it's going to show up. But yeah, it's going to be actually there's two TV shows that are going to show up before Superman and Waller is one of them. Is the other Peacekeeper season two, which is G- Guns Baby? <laughs> They haven't announced that, but the other one is animated. It's Creature Commandos. And they are trying to connect them all. So much like what the Disney Plus series are doing with their series, it's all part of the grander cinematic universe. It's all one universe. That's the goal that Gunn wants to do, or will some of these shows be Elseworlds? No, I think it's going to be all connected. I mean, there's quite a few TV shows coming out that Gunn has in his plan. He has Lanterns, which is going to introduce all the Green Lantern Corps. Uh, he has Paradise Lost, which will be essentially the origin story of Wonder Woman's home, Themyscira, a.k.a. Paradise Island. And I believe there is a Swamp Thing show that's coming out. I'm not sure if that's a movie. That's, that's a movie. That's a movie? Have people okay. been clamoring for a Swamp Thing? Um, is this like something people really eh. want? Because I remember the Adrian Barbeau movie and I was like, this. So he's a guy, and he's he doesn't have any much personality. He just want lumbers around. Uh. <laughs> well, I, I do actually. I do like the character of Swamp Thing. I don't like how OP he's gotten in the last few decades. But um, when DC launched the DC Universe streaming service before HBO Max, there was a Swamp Thing series. It lasted one season, and then it was canceled. So I did watch it, uh, and I was. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing more of it, but uh, yeah, it's gone. So I am curious about that. Um, briefly, you uh, asked about if everything was going to be connected. Uh, James Gunn, speaking of Swamp Thing, had mentioned that that might not be connected to the to the rest of the movies. But I'm wondering if he's just kind of saying that and like kind of leaving it open a little bit. 
where like if it doesn't really fit with the story they might keep it separate but in the comics they do interact the big question is will adrian barbeau be brought back for swamp thing because she was in the movie in the 80s <laughs> and, and wasn't heather locklear in the ser- in the uh in the sequel oh yes. yeah that's right they're gonna bring him back one of the films on the slate is supergirl woman of tomorrow which is interesting because the title is the name is supergirl and then the subtitle is Woman of Tomorrow. I don't know if they're trying to make some sort of statement because uh, why not just say Superwoman or stick with Supergirl? Because Superwoman is an actual character in DC. There is a Supergirl character that's debuting in the Flash movie. Are they not going to use the same character? Like, I guess My guess is Flash will set up these um, other Elseworlds or a multiverse. Here's my take. With The Flash, I think the reason why Flash was allowed to continue as far as a movie is because Flash literally will be the Flashpoint to start off the Gunverse. They're going to somehow use the Flash. He's going to screw up time and either create some sort of multiverse or wipe out the Snyderverse as we know it and create something brand new. That's my thought. Yeah. Yeah. I think they, I think they totally could do that. Um, also, behind the scenes, I think there's just way too much money in that movie are ready for them to like just drop it like they did Batgirl. So I think they have to move forward with it and hopefully they'll make some of that money back at the uh, at the box office. And they're really hoping that their leading man won't be uh, on trial for criminal charges. They're hoping that there'll be some sort of plea. I mean, it's a real, you know, watching that trailer, everybody's all excited and it looks fun and there's Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck and I'm like, and you've got a main character who... <laughs> is accused of being a groomer and a thief and that's why you have tendency. lots of batman in that trailer <laughs> <laughs> yeah remember it's batman yeah. 6 the flash <laughs> yeah that's that's really unfortunate for like all the uh wb execs for all that stuff to come out and they've like postponed this movie so many times and they're probably like peeing their pants well, they're not exactly uh, shy about just stepping on toes to do what they need to get done. They canceled the Batgirl movie outright before it made its debut on HBO Max. And so much that they're now saying it was unreleasable and basically saying we will do anything to sort of protect the brand going forward. And if that means recasting the main character in The Flash, stamping out a film... But there's, you know, that comes with big payoffs um, for for existing contract. I'm sure Gal Gadot and uh, Patty Jenkins, Patty Jenkins probably are getting paid something. Yeah, I mean, they have fat contracts. I'm sure they're going to get paid well. They'll be fine. Hey, we'll be right back. And now back to the show. There's talk of some of the cast coming over from the MCU gun world into the DC world. There are some people who are sort of sensing you know, we talk about it maybe on another show that Marvel is now facing sort of the uh, the other side of the hill of their success and that maybe DC has a chance now to capitalize on some new momentum. Maybe we'll see some uh, of those actors. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think so. You know, it's like uh, some of the actors in the MCU have been in those roles for quite some time already. You know, they signed contracts to do multiple films and I think they're looking to do other roles, uh, other roles you know, just to add to their to their resumes. So you think, I think we'll see them pop up in a, in a gun DC movie? Sure, why not? They're actors. You know, they get paid. They want work. If they have work in a franchise that's going to continue for a couple of years, then why not? Yeah. the uh, One of the big rumors is that uh, Chris Pratt will be Booster Gold. Don't know if it'll happen. It's a rumor, but... I can see that. I think yeah. we've got some people that are just a little like, overexposed right now. I think Pratt... Ryan Reynolds, Chris Hemsworth, and Dwayne Johnson certainly fall in that category. I think the Wayne Johnson is through with the DCU. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, think that's done. Probably count on Michael Rooker. That's Gunn's lucky charm oh, showing up. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I could totally see him. He also is friends with Michael Rosenbaum. Now, wouldn't it be funny if. Oh, Lex Luthor. He's going to be in his 50s. <laughs> he's going to be around the age that Gene Ooh. Hackman was. There you go. Oh. Ooh. That'll be fun. Yeah. You don't think that like Rosenbaum was dropping major hints when because I'm sure he's got a little cameo back as his little diamond headed character in Guardians. Martin X. Like, hey Martin uh, X. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or maybe I, I think Michael Rooker could be Lex Luthor, you know. You could. That's right, boy. I'm the big gun here. Tell me about that crap little piece of Kryptonian rock you got there. Yeah. It's called Kryptonite, son. <laughs> <laughs> well, real quick, let's uh, go through the uh, 
television the rest of the television shows before we hop into more of the movies okay like we mentioned booster gold um is one of the other movies i'm not really a fan of booster gold i know there are fans who do love this character he's a guy who comes from the future <clears throat> uses future technology to fight crime in present day and that's the only way he can be super but it's really silly and kind of jokey i don't know i'm not really a fan of booster gold i don't know what it you guys sounds think. like a kid's sugar cereal it does. I, honestly, I would only be interested in Booster Gold if he was paired up with the Blue Beetle. Oh, that's another movie that that's uh, another movie is they're burning coming off. out. Yeah. yeah, is are they going to incorporate it, or will it just be Elseworlds? We don't know. Probably be Elseworlds, but I yeah, mean, honestly, I think they're just burn, I think it's burning it off. They're burning it off, but honestly, those characters work well together, not separately, because they're yeah. they're clowns essentially. <laughs> they're best buds, and they crack jokes. And they're fun. Another movie you mentioned, uh, sorry, another show you mentioned were Lanterns. So what's cool about that is we're, we're going to get to see Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart, not from The Daily Show. Um, <laughs> but they're basically space cops. They're detectives. Um, something that I was a little disappointed here is that they're going to be solving a crime or mystery on Earth. And with them being space cops, I totally wish they would have leaned into that and just made it like far away in galaxy in a different sector or something like that. Budget. Budget, yeah. Budget, budget, budget. <laughs> I'm sure as a series progresses, if it is popular enough, they might expand into space. They have to. I mean, they're lanterns. Just do what they're doing for the Mandalorian and do the uh, their version of the vault. You know, have like all the the, sc- the high definition screens and to do all the backgrounds and stuff like that. I'm excited about the series because for a long time, WB stayed away from a Green Lantern project because of the Ryan Reynolds movie that was not good. <laughs> yeah. um, and so they tend to shy away from stuff after like they have like a huge flop like that. But uh, yeah, he's one of the original seven members of the Justice League. So I'm excited to see that. What about Aqua Bro? Aquaman Aqua 2. <laughs> that's a film that's, that's coming out this November. Look, no disrespect to Momoa or the people who put this together, but... Aquaman Snyder. was Snyder. N- never cool. I'm sorry. I have no interest in this movie. It made a billion dollars, so and Momoa is still pretty popular. Uh, you know, James Gunn said that he's trying to be diplomatic, and and there's no way he can yeah. service Snyder fans and the, and his own fans and future fans. It's you're gonna have Can't to step make on everyone toes. Happy. But he did say that that he they're not ruling out existing actors staying in roles. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense if you're gonna do a, a hard reboot to kind of keep those Snyder actors. I, I, I think Gunn is being very diplomatic and he's doing his best to ease fans into the transition, but ultimately they're going to do what they're going to do and people will just have to accept it. I personally am looking forward to this reboot because, yeah, I'm not DC fan number one. I'm a Marvel guy, but I do feel like the DCU has not earned the respect that it should have. These are classic characters that have been around since the 30s. And they weren't treated well. And I think Gunn, if anyone could turn the ship around, it's probably him. Yeah, the Snyderverse, the existing movies, movies that have come out, they've just been a mess. <clears throat> These characters deserve more. I'm also not a huge DC fan, but um, yeah, I think Gunn is doing what he can. I think he might offer existing talent uh, new roles as like a peace offering to say, hey, you're not going to be in this role anymore, but we'll give you this. Especially some, someone like Jason Momoa, who's really popular right now. Yeah. Well, Gunn is really a, sh- a very savvy guy. He yeah. uh, had his own sort of trial and fire. Uh, you know, his career was in jeopardy because of uh, things from his past. And people had pushed Disney to fire him from the Guardian sequel. And that happened. And, you know, through sort of his own contrition, it's funny. Some people are willing to forgive things, but not everything. But in his case, he had enough supporters from the talent side and probably the studio side that backed him and said, look, the guy said some things, you know, how many years ago he admits it was dumb. He was trying to be funny. Sometimes that works for some celebrities. It doesn't work for everybody. In his case, they gave him a second chance. He was back in the guardians. And I think, you know, he's, he's able to talk to the fans. He do, I'm surprised how much he engages with people, especially he combats rumors, individual people on Twitter. He will just call out and say, well, that's not true. Or I hate to say it, that we are doing that or we're not doing that. He doesn't need to do that. And I'm wondering if sometimes the studio looks at him a little bit and says, whoa, whoa, he he really doesn't know how to be an executive just yet. He's only been a few months. There's still a bit of the fanboy that he can't rein in. We'll see if that becomes a problem or not. If he makes a DCU lots of money, it won't be a problem. (laughs) So what do you guys think about Gunn as an executive? Do you feel like, uh, obviously, it's only been, you know, less than half a year. Well, I think he's doing some things right 
you know, he came out to the fans. He laid out the ground plan, uh, the groundwork for what they're going to do. He's talking directly to the fans. And I think this is what is needed if the DCU is ever going to get off the ground and be viable with the MCU. You know, you need the guy to go out and tell people, hey, we understand. We hear you. We know you love these characters. You know, we know you want to see this content. Here's what we're doing. We're going to fix this. And we hope you enjoy it. So I think he is he, sharing this job, though. So don't forget, yeah. he's Peter Safran is a producer who's probably more on the production and on the financial side of it. But do you think that there's a potential for issues having two guys sharing a job? Of course, yeah. but they'll oh, work it out. Well, I think kind of like Sean mentioned, you know, Safran's there to kind of like balance out Gunn because he might not have the experience of like a full-on executive. But yeah, to answer your question, I think when you have two people. You know, there's difference of opinion. So I think there's always a chance of them butting heads. Um, so right now, it's they're, I'm, sure, I'm sure they're cool with each other, but down the line, they may have issues. It's going to depend on how well the films do. And it's hard yeah. to say because they're, they, they at least have the advantage where they're planning this coming out of the pandemic, where as Kevin Feige was working on the next phase during the pandemic, not knowing yeah. how well theatrical was doing, they were probably very aware over there of the budget spiraling uh, on Disney Plus series, and you know, once Iger came in, that probably changed again. Another episode we can talk about yeah. what's going on over at Marvel. But I think film going is sort of coming back, but these tentpole blockbusters are really the only thing that's going to get greenlit. But I have to imagine they're going to keep a, a lid on the budgets. Snyder's films were very expensive, and I imagine that they're going to try to push Gunn and Saffron to keep them lower. That might be a, also visually a problem for the fans who are getting yeah. spoiled. Let me ask you guys this. Speaking of the films, is there any particular film or project that Gunn has announced that you guys are personally looking forward to? Well, I'm looking forward to Superman. You know, it's because like we mentioned earlier, I haven't really seen a good Superman movie in a long time. I think Gunn understands that Superman is important. I think he understands the Trinity is important. So that's why he announced the Batman movie. And then he announced Paradise Lost. I think the reason he's going that route is because the Patty Jenkins movies are still too fresh. Yeah. It's still too soon. So I think he's laying the groundwork to eventually intru- uh, to eventually introduce his Wonder Woman. And I think, yeah, it's important to have those three characters in place to uh, set up this new universe and uh, the Justice League. I would agree. I think it's a little weird because I feel like Superman is a little bit like Batman and a little bit like Spider-Man, where we have just gotten a lot of it. We had 10 seasons of Smallville. We had the Brandon Routh movie. We had Henry Cavill's little era, stop and start era. Then we saw Supergirl on the CW with Superman jump in. That Superman went on to have his own sort of Elseworlds type series. So what you're saying is we have an ass full of Superman. (laughs) We need to stop. Well, but I think Doc brings up a good point. Unlike Batman, where we did get, and he won't maybe agree, but you will agree, we did get three very good Batman movies. Yes. Uh, We have not gotten the best Superman movie. So we can make the argument that we've gotten a lot of Superman, but maybe haven't gotten the quality Superman that we want. And we may have to face the possibility that the character itself may just not function in the world we live in. That the idea of a superpowered being who's all American, because they tried to make him dark and flawed like Batman or viewed in a flawed way and fans didn't like it. But I think also audiences are pretty cynical and want sort of the jokey, smart, snarky characters. So I, I think it's a it'll be interesting to see if they can really you don't want to imitate Chris Reeve in that era because you can't. And Brian right. Singer they and shouldn't. Even Snyder learned that lesson. But if you create something that feels foreign to Superman fans, then why bother? So yeah, he's got a challenge with that. Batman seems to be a little more malleable because Dark is always in. <laughs> Dark is in. <laughs> dark is all, Dark never goes out of style. Well, I think James James Gunn can do it. He's he's really good at writing and like developing some of these characters. I think he can do a good job with Superman. I uh, just have to be creative with it. I just want to see a more hopeful Superman. Keep Batman dark, and uh, I think James Gunn can do a good job with it. To answer your question, Smore, I don't really have anything I'm looking forward to, but just because I feel like I've gotten so much of uh, DC characters, I guess like. Doc, I'd like to just see, you know, something just well done. I'm kind of looking forward to maybe the Lanterns because I actually did not see the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern. So I'm not as as up on it. It's a little goofy character for me. I get the whole part of this grander world of police, inter, of intergalactic police. But, you know, like with a, a ring that creates anything you want is just kind of funky to me. But I'm curious, like you guys, I 
if they haven't done it right, I think I'm looking forward to seeing two Green Lanterns that I, and I know I'm familiar with both characters, Jordan and Stuart. So hopefully that would be interesting and will make sense to bring into a, a Justice League. Well, don't feel bad that you haven't seen the Ryan Reynolds movie because it's not worth saying. Just don't waste your time. Well, they erased it from the timeline. Remember, didn't you see Deadpool 2? Ah, that's, that's right. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Lanterns uh, show could be, could be like Lethal Weapon. You know, you have Hal Jordan, who's Mel Gibson, and then you get John Stewart, who's Dan I'm Glover, too old who's, for this shit. Who's more, yeah, you have like the, the straight man, and then you have like the, the guy who's like the recluse. Oh, you guys. Oh, I see yeah. that. One film project we did not mention is The Authority. Yes. Exactly. Now, that one's going to be interesting because if, for those who know The Authority, essentially is a super team that polices the earth, and they're pretty much ruthless in how they deal with threats. So this sounds right up James Gunn's alley, to be honest with you. So I'm interested to see how he's going to approach that film. Do you think that is a byproduct of the success of The Boys on Amazon? Yes, I do. Here are my thoughts. I was surprised that they announced The Authority, but I'm also excited. I'm wondering, I don't I have nothing to base this on, but I'm wondering if he's introducing The Authority as a ruthless version of the Justice League. He's going to slowly build up the Justice League, with Justice League we know, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and the others. And I wonder if they're going to basically adapt. A while back, there was an Action Comics issue where he fought, Superman by himself, fought against a team called the Elite, led by Manchester Black. Mm. And so they were a more ruthless superhero team, and they were basically telling him, you're outdated. You know, you're all hopeful, you know, you're a blue Boy Scout. And so I wonder if they're setting up the authority, because they have counterparts. You know, Apollo is Superman, Midnighter is Batman. They don't all match up but some of them do. So I wonder if he will set up the Justice League. Superman will put them together to, you know, to take down the authority to go up against them. Uh, they kind of touched upon this on the Kingdom Come comic book series, which is basically a response to all the extreme 90s characters. And then in that title, it was in the future and all the older heroes came out of retirement to kind of say, hey, we're, we're not out of date. You guys are killing people. You guys shouldn't be doing that. So I wonder if that's the approach they're going to take with this. I was actually kind of hoping the MCU would have done this. You know, the Ultimates, Sean, how the Ultimates fought against their counterparts in like the second volume. Yeah, I remember that. MCU can't, the MCU Liberators. Can't really, yeah. The Liberators. So you had counterparts for all the characters. They can't really do that, do that anymore in the MCU, but maybe Gunn has plans to do that where they'll eventually set up the Justice League and then you have the authority and you'll have this huge fight between these two, two superpower teams. Okay, you guys have gotten so geek meta, I'm at a loss. Does any of this tie into words, the suit? Words, 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 Does any of these uh, authority characters tie into the Suicide Squad, which is how Gunn got his foot into DC? No. Or Suicide Squad, do you think going to just be kind of ignored other than maybe cameos on the Peacekeeper series? I think they're going to be ignored. I think the authority is where it's at for John. Well, the, we might see some Suicide members on Waller. And, the, and the Authority is going to be independent from uh, Legion of Doom, right? Which I believe Snyder was kind of setting up with his last Justice League. Yeah, it's independent. Yeah, because uh, getting really super nerdy, uh, the Authority came from Image Comic Books under the Wildstorm uh, imprint, which was started by Jim Lee. And so eventually when he started working for DC, all his characters were brought over and integ integrated. They don't use all of them in the DC universe in the comics at this point, but there are some characters. So that's why he's going to use those. I wonder if it's possible with the Flash movie if also they are able to... Because one of the things that was said years ago, and it's probably all trashed, was that the Crisis on Infinite Earth series on the CW, which did include a few cinematic characters, if you recall, that it basically created the, the fact that there's all of these multiverse possibilities. I wonder if this Flash movie will echo that and allow for the possibility of older characters to pop up, or if it's literally just a way to clean the slate, because I'm sure there's reshoots, we've heard, to clean the slate to start completely from scratch with the Gunverse, and we're not going to see anything from CW, we're not going to see anything from HBO Max, yeah. the Peacekeeper, and Snyder is all in the in the. I think order. that's the latter, what you just said. I think essentially they're cleaning house, they're wiping the slate, and they're going to start fresh moving forward. And personally, I want them to do that. They need to clean this mess up. Start fresh, start new. If the goal is to have the DCU compete with the MCU, they're going to have to rethink concepts. And I think that's exactly what they're doing. And I'm all for that. All right. Well, um, that's a lot to uh, digest. Think about. Yes. And, uh, and we do wish them luck because we want this stuff to succeed. I stand by my initial argument that we can't let go of all this stuff, but it's kind of like reinterpreting 
Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. see different versions for decades to come. And who are we kidding? The Marvel Universe will probably be rebooted at some point, and they're going to try Secret to... Secret Wars. <coughs> and, yeah, and they may need to get... <laughs> we'll have to talk about where they're headed maybe in the next round. I'm sure, yeah, Feige's getting some pressure to bring back Iron Man on the screen, so they'll do some kind of reboot, recast at some point down the line. And, you know, I do hope these movies succeed because I want to keep this genre going. I love comic book movies. I always have. I want to keep it going. Keep it fresh. And we want to have stuff to talk about on the expanded universe. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm all, you know, the whole lineup they announced, I'm excited to see it. You know, I want to see what they do. Some interesting choices in there, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And I think um, initially a lot of people ha- are rejecting it, but that's the way things happen. You know, whenever they make a new announcement, people get angry and start shaking their fists. And then eventually when stuff comes out and they start enjoying it, then they'll be totally fine with this new lineup. I don't know, guys. I, I'll just wrap things up by saying that never count out these Snyder fans because there is still this hashtag that's like restore the Snyderverse. Even Gunn must just be shaking his head going, wow. This is a fervent group of 24 people camped outside Warner Brothers Studio. Well, you group of 24 people, if you really want the Snyderverse back, go find Mr. Snyder, donate your funds, and make your own movies. They're like the Kevin. They're like the Kevin McClory's of the Bond world. Like we have the rights. We're gonna just keep making new versions of the Snyder films. <laughs> well, there's that whole uh, campaign. It's a hashtag uh, to sell the Snyderverse to Netflix. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Well, guys, thanks a lot. I think this was uh, this was a good discussion. I think we're uh, we're appreciative and optimistic. Yeah. All I know is that uh, I hope that Warner Brothers lets this play out because the first two projects might come out and they might not do well and they might panic and they might hit the brakes on this. But let it play out and see if you know if he can hit it out of the park with his uh, with his new lineup. Agreed. Well said. Thanks again to those of you both openly geeky and closeted geeky for joining us on this expanded universe journey. This has been S'more, and with me as always is my geektacular co-host. This is Doc. And John H.H. And remember that this is your safe space to talk about all things geeky and where you can get your geek on. One, two, three, and then say it. Is it one, two, three? Well, it's your ass, Cochise. <laughs> on, let's see it on, on four. On four. Okay, so after four or on four? On four. So it's okay. one, two, three. This is all going into the show. <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, three. Geek, geek out! out! Cinema Craptaculous is your podcast destination for all things movies, good and bad, streaming series, good and bad, and pop culture, good, bad, and the ugly. You get a totally different show every week, such as People Also Watched with Adam, Dave, and Tara. They're three industry insiders who always find the hilarity in the big budget feature and the lesser known feature you may have missed. There is, of course, the expanded universe. This is your place to geek out. John, Doc, and S'more are your geek experts to talk about what's going on in the world of uh, streaming series, movies, superheroes, pretty much any showbiz geek topic, they're going to talk about it. And, of course, there's the show that started it all, Cinema Craptaculous, with Stephanie, John, and Dave. You don't even even need to have seen the movies these guys talk about to have a good time. So what are you waiting for? Go and subscribe to Cinema Craptaculous wherever you listen to your favorite podcast.